Oh, looks like a moon base or something like that. Oh, gross. <gasps> T-Rex. All right. I love it. New look for T-Rex. Oh, look at those sauropods. That's gorgeous. It wouldn't be a Jurassic movie without flares. Hi, I'm Andy Farkey. I'm the director of the Raymond M. Alf Museum of Paleontology at the Webb Schools. I'm a paleontologist, and in particular, I'm a paleontologist who studies dinosaurs, among other Mesozoic things. And today, I'm really excited to review the dinosaurs and other critters in the new Jurassic World trailer. Um, now, I'm not going to really go down the, well, actually, rabbit hole of uh, talking about accuracies or this and that. Um, you know, as a, as a kid who watched the first Jurassic Park in the theater, um, I always knew that, you know, scientifically, there was a lot great about those dinosaurs, but there's always going to be things to nitpick. Um, but I want to focus on, you know, what are the real, really cool things that I'm seeing in here uh, first? Like, what do I love about these dinosaurs and the other critters that are in there? So. Why don't we go ahead and get started? Okay, I love this. Here's our T-Rex. Um, it's you know very clearly a very slightly different design from uh, previous T-Rexes we've seen uh, in the other uh, films from this franchise. Uh, it looks maybe actually kind of like a healthier animal. Uh, some of the ones in previous movies looked like a little too skinny to me. You know, I guess that you know, they're genetically engineered, so who knows how healthy they are. Um, but this one, like, almost to me looks a little more convincing as like, okay, this could be um, what a, a resurrected T-Rex might look like. So watching this T-Rex um, swimming, this is a callback to one of the um, original books um, by Michael Crichton. Um, so I just think it's so cool that this scene has made it finally into one of the Jurassic movies. Um, it's so cool, and I think it's, it's neat to show like different kinds of behavior uh, by these animals. So you know, I'm, I'm really excited to see how this will, will look in the, in the full film. Something else that's interesting about this is it looks like um, maybe they've reposed the arms um, on this Rex. Um, you know, I'm not 100% certain because I'm only kind of seeing what's in the trailer here, but the uh, original dinosaurs uh, in, the, in the first movies were, you know, for real dinosaur nerds, you know, we were always pointing out that, oh, it's inaccurate because the arm, you know, the hands are pointing uh, down instead of pointing inward like they should be. And it looks like they might have uh, fixed that in this particular one, um, at least as I'm seeing it on the trailer here. Uh, so, you know, as a well actually moment, uh, this is pretty neat. Don't see that every day. Okay, here's this. This is one of those uh, scenes that like just brings back the wonder of what it was like to watch the very first Jurassic Park movie. Um, sauropod dinosaurs like these, they're just big, they're cool, they're amazing animals. Um, and, you know, maybe, you know, some people would quibble with this or that detail, but I think in this shot, they just look so good, so convincing. Um, you know, it's the sort of thing that just, you know, gives you a bit of uh, movie magic goosebumps. Um, and seeing them in a, in a herd in this big lush valley um, is just so cool. And it's definitely like, you know, some updated designs from uh, sauropods in past movies. And I think to me, at least from what I've seen in this trailer so far, um, just the way these things look is so much more convincing to me as a paleontologist um, versus, you know, maybe some of the some other movies. So this is really cool to see so far. Okay, here we go. Yeah, it looks like a pterosaur. Um, I've seen in some uh, promotion around it that it's the an might be the animal Quetzalcoatlus. Um, cool. You know, I can't sp say much to whether or not you know it's accurate or not, but cool to see another sort of uh, flying animal in these. And I'm guessing you know because the real ones were you know objectively pretty terrifying animals. You know, these like giraffe-sized things on stilts that would eat little baby dinosaurs and other cute things. Um, I think they're really cool to have as, as kind of a cool um, you know, and, and terrifying animal uh, in this uh, particular movie. Okay, this is so cool. This is like my favorite movie. Uh, and my favorite moment in the trailer for this movie. So to, uh, to celebrate this moment, and I just want to take, I'm going to take a minute or two or 
20 right here to acknowledge this amazing animal on the screen. And so seeing this for the first time, I'd heard rumors that this animal was going to be in here and um, seeing it actually in the trailer was really special for me personally. Um, I got to break out here my uh, celebratory um, beverage, uh, this uh, commemorative can with this animal on it. Um, this is in the screen uh, on this can, I guess also in uh, toy sets, Legos, all sorts of things, action figures. Um, the animal Aquilops or Aquilops, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Uh, personally, seeing this in the movie is really great for me. And, you know, now I have like a Quillops themed uh, soda. Um, personally, this is a, a special animal. Um, I was part of the research team that named it, um, along with colleagues from the Oklahoma Museum of Natural History, Western University of Health Sciences, um, and other institutions. Uh, so this animal um, is a early relative of Triceratops. It lived maybe around 106 million years ago or so in what's now Montana. Uh, it's important because it's the oldest member of this group that uh, has good fossils from North America. Uh, it was a cute little animal and very clearly they're leaning into the cute. Um, for me, as a scientist, seeing the research that my colleagues and I did, um, studying the original fossil, which is at the uh, Sam Noble Oklahoma Museum of Natural History, and being able to put a name on it, and then, you know, a decade after we published the scientific paper, seeing our animal, uh, this animal that we all worked on to interpret, to understand, to bring back to life, seeing it brought back to life on the movie screen is just such an incredible feeling. Um, so we only see in the trailer this this little critter, you know, for just a, you know a few seconds. Um, but seeing that, you know, I'd heard the rumors about you know this animal possibly being in there, and like actually seeing it now on the screen, like. That's such a cool moment as a scientist. And they're really cute, which I knew they were cute going in. I'm glad they saw that too. Um, it's a monster, clearly. Um, I guess we'll find out what all sorts of you know, different organisms were combined to make it. Uh, you know, I guess it's going to be the villain of the movie. Maybe we're going to see it defeated by T-Rex. That would be great. Um, we'll see here. Okay, I don't know what that animal was. It looks like another mutadon type thing or relative. Um, clearly there's some pterosaur stuff going on with it. Those winged reptiles looks like maybe some velociraptor type things in there. Um, going a little further in the trailer, it looks like we're going to get some other views of it. Yeah, there it is. It's sort of a, a freaky looking thing. It's got like velociraptor claws and scaly skin and wings. And and uh, yeah, it's like a mishmash. I remember when I was a kid, I would draw like dinosaurs that, you know, imaginary dinosaurs that combined parts of other dinosaurs. And looks like they've really leaned into that here. Oh, Mosasaurus. All right, so Mosasaurus is this gigantic uh, aquatic reptile, a marine lizard. Um, they've featured in some of the other uh, Jurassic World uh, movies. They're, I guess, you know, giant sea monsters. Of course, in the movie, because you got to make it scary, it's much, much, much bigger than the real world Mosasaur was. Uh, that's okay. It's a movie. You know, these are movie monsters. Um, but it's kind of cool to see it out doing and swimming its, and uh, doing its thing. Um, trying to eat the uh, heroes of the story. Now, this is an interesting shot of it. Um, you know, it's very clearly inspired by watching like a humpbacked whale or something uh, breaching. I'm intrigued by the pattern they've chosen on the belly of it with sort of those, those uh, like, like almost like ridges and grooves. Um, it looks very reminiscent of what you might see on many uh, modern day whales. And I'm guessing that's probably the inspiration that was taken for, for it. Um, again, like this animal's way bigger than any of the fossils that we have out there, but you know, it's a movie. So I guess you got to have some cool oversized monsters to go with it.
And yeah, that's the trailer. I love seeing the classic logo there. Um, yeah, it's one of those yeah, definitely hits nostalgia, um, but also seeing you know these new takes on the story. Um, I don't know if I'm you know as a paleontologist if I'm a huge fan of of uh, including the monster uh, type animals in there, but you know I get it's uh, it's a movie. You gotta have some new stories and some new types of animals. Uh, but I'm especially excited to see the uh, dinosaur Aquilops in there. Um, again, as someone with a personal connection to it, as a researcher with many of my colleagues, seeing one of uh, what we'd say is our animals on the screen, that's really a dream come true. And you know, I've got with me, uh, this is a model of a skull that someone uh, at University of Oklahoma and the Oklahoma Museum of Natural History put together uh, for Aquilops. Um, as you can see, like this is a this is a three dimensional reconstruction, like removing the distortion from the original fossil. Um, these guys were really cute. Um, you know, when we worked on it, um, you know, definitely we were you know, we leaned into the cuteness. Um, it's just a, a neat little animal, um, and I'm I'm excited to see that you know other people have recognized that also. Uh, so just in closing, you know, I think it's really cool to see recent science incorporated into this in new ways. I'm excited about how it's going to let us tell the story of paleontology, um, maybe get some people interested in some new kinds of dinosaurs. And for those of you out there watching this, um, you know, it's important to remember that the animals uh, that you see in these movies, especially things like the T-Rex and the Quetzalcoatlus and the Aquilops and these other real world dinosaurs are based on actual fossils in actual museums. And it's work by paleontologists like me and many of my friends and colleagues uh, that make this happen. Um, so as you uh, are out there watching the movie this summer, remember that. And you know, if you're in a position to support museums, um, to help us do the work that we need to do, um, that's something that can really you know, help bolster the field and bring new discoveries to the big screen. So thank you so much for watching this along with me. I had a lot of fun and I can't wait to see all of these dinosaurs, including that one that's super special to me, uh, up there on the screen this summer.